Today we will be learning how to use Fritzing to lay out our projects on a strip board. Since ultimately the goal of an electronics course is to make a real product that really works, we have to create it in the real world. In this class I like to use the strip board because it has the same pin spacing and configuration as a protoboard. You do need to plan your layouts using the provided sheets before using a CAD tool to lay out your design. So if you jump right into Fritzing, you will spend more time doing this project than if you lay it out by hand um, in the sheet attached. All right. So the PCB or strip board we're going to use is uh, this part right here. Some of you, depending on the project, will only get half. This is the top, this is the bottom of it, and you can see all these connections are in copper, and it matches this protoboard. A lot of people think that because you don't need to solder it, this is a very quick prototyping tool, but you can spend hours debugging loose connections, things fall out when moved, and as soon as you put it into your book bag, your project will stop working. It, it really is better to plan out what you're going to do and then solder it in. And then, it, then testing uh, becomes a lot easier. So you do need to plan your layouts. Uh, have these attached sheets that match this proto board. And you can just do things by hand. Once you have a plan, then you can use fritzing. All right. So you've already done your strip board plan. You can download Fritzing from here. It's free. Just make sure you get the right version. Um, I've even provided the strip board that we use in this file and even a sample project um, in this file as well. And this is what that sample file would look like. Here's a schematic from LT Spice. This uh, voltage regulator is this voltage regulator right here. I have two op amps. The LT1013 is a dual op amp in one package. All right. I've wired up a battery. This is the pinout of the LT1013. And what's neat about Fritzing is when you put down a resistor, you can change it, and then the, the color coding... Um, changes as well so that as you're assembling your circuit board uh, make things a lot less prone to putting the wrong thing where. Now what I'll do now is let's go to my Fritzing layout which you can download Now here, here everything is now live. And there's just some interesting things. You guys will be using the LM317, which you could select to make it a variable V. But then it, it does something weird. And so in reality, it's best just to put it in, not change this and that you know that it's an LM317 and that you'd need two resistors to set the output voltage. In this case, it's a five volt voltage regulator and you just plug it in. Now, what's great is that I can select on, an, on a connection and everything that's connected to it highlights. So as you recall, this is V out of the voltage regulator, which I bring up to this line so I can distribute positive voltage and then you can see that it actually is connected to V plus of the op amp. If I click on the ground you can see that it's connected to the ground of the battery, the ground of the adjust pin on this voltage regulator, and the uh, negative 
power supply of the op amp. Now, the resistors do kind of force you to maybe use a little more space than you could in a real layout. Um, there are some tricks to saving space in that I can rotate that resistor. I think 85 was pretty good. That I can... rotate that resistor to try to get it into that spot. Um, the thing is, is I can also kind of use these things called a bendy leg where I can make it connect wherever I want because these resistors do have tails that are about this long, but um, it's kind of a stand-up resistor where you bend the pins together and put it side by side. Uh, Fritzing doesn't allow a nice picture of that. Now sure, I can put a resistor here and then use a, a bendy leg here and that would be what is a stand-up resistor where it's not really connected to here all right, so if I click that, see, that's the end of the resistor connected. Click here, that's the other. Click here, it's not really connecting to that resistor. Well, that's more of an advanced technique. We can just delete that. Um, now, they don't really have a selection of parts from various manufacturers. So that's the LT1013. If I want to turn that into a one... 06. I just come down here and and change the edit. <coughs> um, this doesn't generate a simulation file, <coughs> but it can make a nice layout that then you can go and check. Hey, this is um, you know what is this connected to? Oh, that's out one, which is connected to the input of the next op amp. So you can come through and double double check everything to make sure that you've connected what you're supposed to connect. All right. You can see ground goes uh, many places. What I've done here is just added wires to various nodes and then labeled it. And sometimes you, you will solder in an extra wire so that you can clip the probe to it. You can also just grab this, put it in uh, PowerPoint or some other program, and then label the nodes. What I didn't really see was a place to add a net name to this, but uh, that, that's a pretty good hack for that. Um, just so you know, Fritzing has all these, they have tutorials and they have a lot of projects that you can make on your own, learn on your own. Yes, they are in love with this breadboard, but um, just because I'm a pill about it doesn't mean you have to listen to me at all times. That should be enough to get.